Hi, welcome to Pictures, Noise and Words. I'm Hedgy. I'm Baz. And this is Gorguts, who I don't know. Uh, no. It's one of those bands I've heard of, mm. um, but never, just never, never listened to, basically. We're also playing Guess the Game again. So this is a game I've played more in the last 12 months or so than is probably healthy. So, uh, yeah. Fill your boots. Anyway, a song called Stiff and Cold. Giggity. Um, <laughs> okay. Well, I'm not saying anything about your girlfriend. Anyway. Um, it's off this... Oh, I'm sorry about that. It's off this album, Considered Dead, from 1991. Um, and I had an email from... Uh, well, it, he's put his name as Hoppy, and he's... Email is V Hopkins, so I don't actually know what his, his or her name is. But Hello, anyway. Yeah. Hello, Hoppy. So I haven't listened to it on purpose. It's a 1991. It looks like a thrash metal album. It, it does. It's, it's, on you know, that cover, doesn't it? Could we get on a thrash tape? This is one of those roll the dice yeah. things. There yeah. is no video. Just audio. Um, it's just audio. Um, but this, I, this, I was this, kind this, of intrigued. It's one of those you go, ah, yeah, no, I've heard of that band. So this, this is Hedgy relinquishing on his promises again. Okay, okay. <laughs> Thanks for that. What happened was, what happened was... I sit back now, I've done that. <laughs> sure, just... So, yeah, uh, Hoppy rank, uh, did write to me uh, weeks and weeks and weeks ago. <laughs> and I said, oh yeah, yeah, okay, no probs. I'll, uh, I'll get on that. And then didn't... Um, because I'm a bad person. You let, you let down. I'm, I'm, I just let people down. I'm ashamed of myself. And then he wrote to me again and said, I just wondered if you were ever going to get round to that thing you said you'd do. So here we are. Hoppy says that uh, he's, he's pumped that there might be a chance that we would do it. So here we go. Well, here we are. So I hope we don't hate it here after all this. Here we are. It's going to be a, a piano ballad. <laughs> <laughs> Judging by the cover, I've got a feeling it's not going to be a, a piano ballad called Stiff and Cold. <laughs> I'm just looking at your reply here. There was an earthquake you had to rescue some orphan kittens. How many orphan kittens have you rescued? I'm always rescuing them. <laughs> Didn't you re that's literally, rescue them two videos that's, ago? That's what I'm doing all of the time. How many orphan kittens Seeking out know? wherever a kitten has been orphaned, I will be there. Um, yeah. Anyway... <laughs> We Here we go. Here we we go. should just play this because I don't know what it is. Yeah. But but, and and everyone's just going get on with it. I can literally hear them. Um, that, that, that's your wife downstairs. <laughs> Not downstairs. I mean in the in the next field. Yes. Where uh, where it wasn't we're... easy getting these chairs on top of this hill. Mm. Hmm. I hope you appreciate the effort. It is actually. I mean, look, you can see the leaves moving and stuff. We're we're really here. So this is different. Cold with intro. Stiff, yes, this is stiff and cold in brackets with intro, which you can see if I just switch off this bit. There we go. So that's all you get in. There's no video. I don't know what it is. I did think they, I've said that once or twice. If the bit to the cover, I mean, I, I, I subscribe to a YouTube channel called the New the New Wave of Classic Thrash, and it just looks like a band that has just been appeared on, appeared on here. It's a great, just, great channel that actually. I'm just wondering where. I mean, it's on Roadrunner Records. They used, to, they used to do more heavier stuff, didn't they? I'm just wondering oh, where they're from. I don't know anything about them, and I've done no research, which will surprise nobody. Well, they can do their own, can they? Let's just play it. I don't think you need that picture in the middle, do you? It's just going to be... Yeah. <laughs> Can I just say before the song gets going? Do you remember the early nineties? Yes. 
I, I thought you would. I wasn't sure if all the drugs had erased it. But um, when every thrash metal or metal band had to have an acoustic bit. I know this is an intro, but do you remember there was always... Yes. Or every album had a had an acoustic track, didn't it? Almost to say, "Look, yeah. mom, <laughs> we can really play. all those guitar lessons." <laughs> I don't. I was paying attention. Yeah. And this is just it's just literally taking me back to that time when when anyway.
for some reason my pants have turned into cut off shorts and uh, <laughs> into log shorts and my shoes have turned into high top trainers <laughs> <laughs> just need a just need a cap to wear backwards the guitar sound was so of its time yeah yeah wasn't it and and, and when i'm listening to that i'm just literally i put myself like back in time to listen to it with my old ears if you see what i mean because mm. if you if you listen obviously if you listen to it with a modern take it sounds like it was recorded on a potato but if you take your mind back to those like early overkill albums or whatever you yeah. can you you kind of go yeah i can see what 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 this is so it's like that late 80s sound yeah you can also um it shows you how much music production especially metal has has evolved because i still don't th I, I think it it was only until um, how, how do you want to say fair factory i think Demanufacture album that I started to notice a huge shift in metal production. I mean, you forget like the bands who had the money, like um, I, the Iron Maidens of this world, and uh, later Metallica. I guess I had the money to come up with some sounds really good, but anything below that, I, 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 I am of the opinion that. Um, the engineers and producers didn't know really know how to handle this sort of stuff, so they sort of did what the best they could. So they'd get them all in a room and go, just mic it all go! up, it, yeah. <laughs> kind yeah. of thing, wouldn't it? Yeah. It would be, yeah, it'd be. And, so, and I remember Zentrix actually saying that, that that their first album was like Zentrix live, just recorded in a studio. Totally, yeah, yeah. Because someone literally just pointed at them yeah. through a glass wall and went. So, so, so that's when you have like stuff like this, and uh, I do have a Pestilence album somewhere back in. Uh, I guess still got it somewhere. Um, that and uh, um, Napalm Death and and also bands that just have this really muddy production that probably a little hampers the the rhythm and and the riffs hit, especially in this because there's quite a lot going on. Uh, just hampers a little bit. I think it's just a cleaner sound would, would would really have helped it. But would that take away from from the charm? Because the charm. Because to, to me that had that. Took me, took me right back yeah to, exactly to i was to like sort of oh stuff. my god and there's, a, and there's a charm to it there's, a, there's an integrity to it there's an honesty to it because obviously they were they were producing this music because that's what they wanted to do there's also an element of if you're a gorgots fan like hoppy who, who wrote the email clearly is it this probably means something to him you know it's mm. part of his teen years i don't know uh, whatever but i, I, mean, I get I, I get the definitely get the feeling he was there, you know, at the mm. time, and uh, so it means something to him. So you kind of bring it with you, and you, you, you hear it differently, you know, because it's got. And it's like me listening to an, an Overkill album from that time. I don't listen to it like a fresh pair of ears would, sort yeah, of thing, yeah. you know. So there's the rose-coloured. I was going to say spectacles, but I don't know what the ear rose version of rose-coloured rose spectacles is. Yeah. Um, you know, but you 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 imbue it with more than there is kind of thing, and yeah, you know, because at the time, it, you were there, and that's what music sounded like, mm. kind of thing. So yeah, kids watching this, if you got this far, which you almost certainly did not, um, <laughs> it's spoiled with. Decent, this is what we used to yeah, listen to. Spoiled these days to do some production because what you can do because there no there was no plugins back in there. Maybe it was just stick a mic in front of you. Um, yeah, uh, I, uh, and that. Uh, speaker and, and, and you trusted your look and somehow we'll mix it together in and, 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 you probably had, and you probably had two weeks <laughs> to put it all together so whatever decent guitar sound you, you could find in the first half a day yeah uh, you, you sort of kept because you spent the next three days trying to mic up the drums yeah so but i'm not kidding myself if you put out that album today uh forget it <laughs> basically no one's going to listen to it mm. but if you've got that uh history with it it means something to you and you hear it differently and or even if at least like us you were there man you were there back in the day and you did and that was how me and you remember it sounded like that and you listened to your vinyl records and they you know with with whatever production they managed to get on it then you can hear what's going on and you can appreciate it but um i mean obviously it doesn't stand up to modern scrutiny which is why no. we're not no. scrutinizing but, it modernly but uh, having said that I remember when um, Dave Mustaine went and remixed and remastered his old back catalogue. I think it was the 
year and a half, I think it was, when he got that injury and he uh, went back and made it done. Um, and sometimes it worked and sometimes it didn't. And, and what, cleaning it up? Cleaning it up, yeah. Um, I, I, I liked the Rust in Peace clean up because he brought the base to uh, higher in the mix and clean that up a little bit and I, and I quite like that um, but so far so good so what in particular you started hearing more that they put in and it was too much it didn't sound right oh, right, okay. because you get used to how something well, yeah, sounds yeah it didn't sound right sounds. To your, so, so because the, you knew it yeah because so the point I'm trying to get if, if someone did get the original Gorguts tapes and thought right let's remix it and, ch and, uh, and tidy everything up it probably, it probably wouldn't be the same. It may not survive it, uh, yeah. yeah. Um, because all the Gorguts fans go, I yeah, prefer the Chab of the original. I, and, and I totally get it. I mean, I, I get that with early, early Megadeth. Apart from the first album, because I thought the, the latest remaster, remix of the first album, I thought it was really good. Oh, okay. Um, but the remix, remasters of Peace Cells and So Far So Good So What um, didn't, so just took away the rawness, uh, rawness of it. So I used to dig out a classic track and put it on and in the title I would put classic so that people knew what was coming um, and I think I'll do that with this I think I'll stick the I'll have the classic label on it in the in the title um, because you have to go into this with the right mindset I think yeah because we saw it was 1991 so we kind of recalibrated our <laughs> yeah we, we sort of knew what we we're going, going to get uh, i think really. yeah i mean the album cover is a bit of a giveaway because a lot of albums looked like that in the back in the day didn't they uh but uh yeah so thanks hoppy um yeah. i can see definitely why you like it i'm not going to run out and buy the album because i'm new to it and so it's too and it's free on YouTube, it looks like that. And it's free on YouTube anyway, I can listen to the whole thing. No, yeah. but, you know, it's um, too much time has passed, I think, between the making of this album and me f listening to it, I suppose. Um, but but it's, it's good to listen to it as a, as a lesson, see how this type of... Probably something that pre uh, always predates grindcore and that the, the heavier death metal yeah. stuff. And I think they were quite popular. Because I've heard of them over yeah, the years, I've you know, for, them, yeah. you know, yeah. just, just. Yeah. Well, obviously got you know, signed to Roadrunner Records. I mean, they yeah, Roadrunner, had, yeah. Who else did they have? I know an hour later on Roadrunner, but oh. this is quite early Roadrunner, though, isn't it? Oh, yeah, on Roadrunner. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah. Uh, blast from the past, folks. We'll see you soon. See you now. Bye bye. Right.